Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build a Kubelwagen, because I have a great need to wagen some Kubels or something. You can probably tell by the title, and the way the box looks, that this is a Rubicon Models Kubelwagen Type 82 kit. It's a plastic wargaming model in 28mm scale, or if you prefer, 156 scale. The back of the box shows us a basic painting guide, an image of the included decal sheet, and some paragraphs about the Kubelwagen. A pretty standard box really, not that that's a bad thing of course. Consistency is good. Inside the box we find a single sprue moulded in grey plastic. I'm quite accustomed to Rubicon sprues being nice, high quality mouldings, and this one is certainly no exception. It's very neat and tidy. There are mould lines of course, they are after all the ever present bane of plastic modelling, but in this case they're very minor and won't take much time or effort to remove. I'm no Kubelwagen surgeon, in fact I dropped out of Kubelwagen surgery school, so I can't tell you how accurate the details in this are, but they look pretty good to me. The kit is a bit simple, which is fitting because it's a Kubelwagen, and a Kubelwagen is a simple car, which if you're doing wartime production is pretty much exactly what you want. Anyway, the parts here look very nice, and there's a few things we get to make choices on, like the wheels, machine gun, crew figure parts, and you can even model it with the doors open, though that will require a little bit of extra surgery. The decal sheet has a lot of choices too. There's a whole bunch of markings and insignia, as well as plenty of choices for license plates. This is great if you're going to have a whole swarm of these. Is a swarm of Kubelwagens something people do in bolt action? I'd like to see that. The instruction booklet is also good, as I would expect. Looking at this you can tell that it's going to be a pretty simple build. The instructions are well laid out and are easy to understand and follow. There are notations to point out where things should be installed first or last, and where you can make choices. The last page shows us how to do the open door conversion. So that's what's in the box. Let us now commence the gluing together of bits of plastic. I start with the base of the Kubelwagen, I guess you might call it. Those bits at the front, which is the narrow end, are not sprue, so unless you really want to have trouble fitting the wheels later on, don't clip them off. The first thing I do is glue this engine housing into place. It also forms the rear seats, which is convenient. Once it's in place, I add some extra glue along the sides. Doing this after the part is on means that you won't put the glue in the wrong place, and it also pleases the glue god. Next, the sides of the Kubelwagen can be glued into place. There are guides moulded into the parts, and they more or less just fall into place. Not literally, but you know what I mean. All I really had to do was apply a little pressure to the sides to ensure that there were no unwanted gaps. Nobody wants unwanted gaps. That's why they're called unwanted gaps. While that bonds, I glue the dashboard part to the underside of the front bit. These parts go together really easily. I set those aside to bond, and I glue this thing onto the rear. There are slots in the bottom of this that help it lock onto the ribbing on the car body, which makes it really easy to get the positioning just right. Pretty clever design really. I follow this by gluing the front part into place. This is also nice and easy. There's keying on the sides of the Kubelwagen to ensure this doesn't go too far down into the body. I did find I had to apply some pressure at the front to minimise gaps there, but that's not really a big deal. Now, why not make some headlamps? These are simple, and the D-shaped keying will ensure that you don't put these together all wibbly wobbly. You do get the choice here of the covered blackout headlamps that I'm using, or regular ones, though the lenses are a piece of solid opaque plastic which means you will have to do some paint trickery to make them look convincing. This is pretty much normal for a wargaming kit, so you know. I install the spare wheel at the front here like so, and this is of course made very easy by the guide pins. This is the point where you need to choose which wheels you would like to use. There's the kind I've used, which are the regular ones which I'm assuming are better for mud and dirt, or there's some more rounded looking wheels with smoother tread, which I assume are for sandy desert areas. The choice is yours. I then install another wheel, though this one is for steering, which some might say is just as important as the wheels that touch the ground. This is pretty easy to place, though it might be a bit easier if you glue it on at the same time as you add the dashboard part. A shovel comes next, because sometimes you just need to dig a hole. I figure out where the shovel should sit, and using the forces of gravity by holding the model sideways, I put the shovel where I want it and then add glue around the part. 
Headlamps are installed next, and this is pretty simple. There's keying in the front mud guards for this, though there is a little bit of play in the parts, so some nudging might have to be done. My left headlamp isn't quite perfect, but that just adds character, right? The time for wheel assembly has arrived, and this is really simple. You glue the back parts onto the wheels and that's it. There are two of each kind for a total of four wheels. There's no need to worry about alignment or keying or anything like that here. Then, instead of adding the wheels to the Kubelwagen, I install these little floor plates. I think the reason they've done this is to save a little bit of plastic, which is fine, but it looks like, if you wanted, you could use these little compartments to magnetise driver figures or something like that. That would be kind of fancy and obviously I didn't do that. It just occurred to me while editing this video that it might be a cool idea for somebody. Next, I installed this rear bumper thing. This goes into place easily enough, but probably be at least a little bit careful with this. It seems like it would be kind of easy to break. The wheels can be installed next, and you can see how different the keying is at the front and rear. The fit is quite good, though there's a tiny bit of play in them. More so at the front of the Kubelwagen, so you might need to do a bit of nudging until the wheels are nice and straight. The front wheels also look like you might be able to put them on wrong, so do be careful with that. I think they look really good. The windshield comes next, and we have to make another choice here. I've chosen the folded down windshield with a canvas cover because you have gotta protect that glass. But there is also a windshield without the cover, and you could model that up or down or anywhere in between, I guess. I chose the covered one because the uncovered one has no glazing, and I think this one will look a bit more convincing because of that. Next, the convoy light goes here between the left headlamp and spare wheel. This isn't too hard to place, but it might be a bit easier if you do this before adding the spare wheel and headlamps. The canvas roof covering goes into place next, and this pretty much just drops right into place. It does look a bit gappy at the sides there, but I'm sure that's fine, and if it's not, it's probably pretty easy to fix. The instructions do mention that if you don't want this, you can cut the framey bits off and just not glue the canvas part into place. Some Kubelwagens did have that removed, so that might be a nice thing to do if you are going to build multiple of them to tell them apart. The gun mount comes next, and you can see that there's a small notch in the pole part, and that's where we glue this crossbar thing, I guess you might call it. I don't worry too much about getting the positioning of this right, because you can just put it into the vehicle and use that to get the final alignment. Pretty simple stuff. I assume that little compartment thing there is for holding ammo for the gun, or maybe, and more likely, boxes of sauerkraut. Now that we have a mounting for the gun, we need to make a choice of gun. Either the MG34 or MG42, and then we install it which, as you can see, is really easy. And now that it's armed, the 28mm scale Kubelwagen from Rubicon Models is now completed. I feel like I've said Kubelwagen a hundred times today, but according to the script I wrote, it's only mentioned 15 times. Anyway, this is a really nice looking model, and while that's not surprising, and you can see it with your own eyes, I still think it's worth mentioning. The kit does come with a crew figure, and I clearly chose not to use that, so some might complain that the model isn't actually finished, but just shh, shh, be quiet. The covered and folded windshield that I used makes it plausible to say that this Kubelwagen has been parked anyway. This Kubelwagen was quick and simple to build, and to be fair wargaming kits are usually designed that way, but it was also a lot of fun. I do enjoy a kit that you can put together in a short amount of time and see results quickly. It's quite satisfying. It's also pretty much exactly what you want if you're more into building a force for your tabletop shooty man's game than spending hours gluing bits of plastic together. I mean, I enjoy doing that, but not all wargamers do, and that's fair. Of course, if you want to, you could use this as a display model, and that's totally fine. I think it would work quite nicely for that. It's just that the kit's primary purpose is as a wargaming model. The detail in this kit is pretty good, though I think it would be pretty cool to add some extra bits and pieces. Maybe something from the Rubicon German stowage set or something like that. There's a lot of cool things you could do. I have no idea what I'm going to do with mine, either of them. I actually have two of these. I bought a second one because I forgot that I had the first one. This is because I'm a very smart and sensible person. Anyway, it gets a hearty thumbs up from me. 
If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to put those in the comment section below. If you've built one of these, or any other cool models and you would like to share, why not drop by our Discord community and show us some pictures? We'd love to see what you've done. If you'd like to watch me build kits like this live on stream, head on over to my Twitch channel which is where I stream. The link is in the description below. And if you've not already done so, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron if you want to see my videos a bit early, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch next time I'm live. Links to all of my things are in the description below, and as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, have a great day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.